It is the dream of any military officer to serve the commander-in-chief directly. In a defense force full of thousands of troops, a fortunate few get the rare chance to interact with the president of the Republic of Kenya. The interaction gets even more personal when you are the presidential pilot. But what does it take to become one? Hassan Mugambi interacted with not one, but two former colonels of the Air Force, with more than 40,000 hours of flight experience between them, having flown two presidents. A couple of people look out, the helicopter taxi by Alpha, by At his Wilson Airport hangar is retired Colonel Hussein Farah. Once a commander of the Kenya Air Force VIP squadron, he spends part of his time here supervising engineers at work. They have a harness and the fellow is hooked so that in case he slips from that position, he doesn't hit the ground and he's held by that uh, safety device. After concluding his rounds at the Bluebird Aviation Hangar, where he is currently the Chief Executive Officer, he sits with us and takes us back to when he joined the Kenya Air Force back in 1971 and served for 23 years. The most important was, of course, flying uh, the President, uh, President Moy then. It was in a very difficult situation. Uh, this is just after the 82 uh, attempted coup and he was in Kisumu and the, the captain who was a retired general Leshan who later became the Air Force commander was in a court martial involving the coup because G General Leshan was, was forced by the rebels to fly them to Dar es Salaam. So now I think he was giving evidence against them in the court martial. And the president is in Kisumu and he needs to be picked. So I was told you have to go and pick the president. And it was a night flight and there was no lighting on the Kisumu air uh, runway at that time. So we literally took off using the aircraft lights. Having clocked more than 25 hours of flying, Farah, a lover of fitness, narrates how the late President Moy carried himself with humility when he flew him, occasionally popping into the cockpit to find out what the pilot and his first officer were up to. And the first thing he'll do is he'll go through documents which are on his table. He'll go through that and next he'll read the newspapers. Then he'll start talking to his team, some of the cabinet members who are there, and you know at some point that he'll come to the cockpit. A hands-on man, President Moy engaged them quite a bit while airborne on matters aviation but also on how the country was faring. And we would, he would listen and a lot of times you'll go later on and see a decision that has been made based on what you told the president. So we always used to give the truth. Farah, who became President Moi's favorite pilot, fondly remembers how happy Moi was when they finally created a storage space for his mark of authority, the iconic Rungu. We created a tube here on the side Please. for him to be sliding it there and it, it stays. It's not a loose article in the aircraft anymore. That made him so happy. More than this whole, he said, Munaangalia welfare yangu kabisa kabisa. We're sharing the next presidential pilot experience from on board this aircraft, a Dash 8 Q400. Registration number, five Yankee, Victor Victor Oscar. After which we will be taking off the Wilson Airport. Retired Colonel James Gitahi, popularly known as JG, has also piloted presidential aircraft. He has more than 19,000 flight hours under his belt and 40 years of experience. Today, we find him inspecting an aircraft before flight. 
From the flaps to the engine, everything must be done to the book. His interest in flying was sparked during his school years. Uh, when I was in school, uh, I saw an aircraft landing at Kitale. I come from actual Kitale, that's where I was born. And uh, me and my colleagues, we decided to go to Kitale Airfield to have a look at this particular aircraft. So from there on, I developed that interest. And I said, one day I want to fly an aircraft. His passion for flying earned him wings in 1981 after he underwent special training both in Kenya and abroad. He would take over the reins from Colonel Farah as the commander of the VIP squadron. It takes tenacity to be one. He still remembers his first flight with Moy. Lieutenant Colonel Leshan actually told me that we are going to fly the president to Eldon. I said, wow, <laughs> Eldon, me? I mean, who am yeah, I? Yeah. I mean, the other tougher guys there. I mean, why should they pick on me? Yes. Yeah, and I've never even seen the president that close. Yes. So, but I said, okay, fine, if that's what they have decided, I'm equal to the task. With the commander-in-chief on board, Kano Gitahi felt intimidated as though he was under strict surveillance. So I tried to look behind, but you know, it looked like he was looking at me directly. So I quickly <laughs> turned around and I faced the phone. Yes. But as a father, the flight was an event. We went all the way to Eldore, we dropped the president and then came back to uh, Nairobi. The fear of flying the late President Moy was soon replaced by a friendship between the two. President uh, Moy was uh, more outgoing. Actually, when he was in the plane, he never used to sit in one place all the time. He would actually move up and down the aircraft. He would talk to the people at the back security. He would talk to the, the VIPs in the middle, like the ministers. And then he would also come and sit in his cabin, the front cabin. But he used to move up and down. And he would come to the cockpit many times and ask you, where are we now? He would show him some of the charts. And he was very keen to learn. You know, he wanted to know exactly how, how are you doing this business. He also flew President Mwai Kibaki on board the Dash 8 100, coded Harambe 1 on local flights and Kenya Air Force 1 on international flights. Uh, if I look at uh, President Kibaki, he was a quiet man, I would say. He was a quiet man. Uh, basically, he used to read a lot of magazines, a lot of newspapers, magazines. So we used to ensure that we had enough stock in the aircraft, all the dailies that we could get our hands on. As the chief captain at Bluebird Aviation, he now dispenses advice to young pilots. Just work hard. Hard work pays in the end. If you don't work hard, you don't achieve what you want. And then you have to set your objectives. What do I want to be? What do I want to, where do I want to be? Okay? So if you're not committed, then it becomes difficult because uh, in this job, you don't have the passion for it. Then, of course, you don't expect good results. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, yeah, kilo, November, November, kilo. Together with First Officer Guleid Abdullahi, Kano Gitai gives us a lift above Nairobi and its environs. It is standard operation procedure to tick each box of the checklist. I also earn myself a chance to sit in the cockpit. Though the duo of Kano Farah and Kano Gitahi Never had an emergency encounter, a presidential pilot is taken through specialized training to deal with any eventuality. With such experience on deck, the lift and landing was smooth. Hassan Mugambi, Citizen TV. A couple of people look out, uh, the helicopter, the taxi via Alpha, via Beta, to